give looking at how our proportions can be used to solve the practical problems. You should have already completed page four where I got you guys kind of started with learning how to take the words from the question up here and how to consider your verbal model and put it into the proportion. So we're going to continue that today and then I'm also going to kind of talk a little bit for how to analyze the questions to see if we are predicting or converting. So we'll go through this first question together and then we'll go through the second and then the third one and we'll kind of see how to answer if we're predicting or converting. All right, so we're going to be at a concession stand for this first problem and it looks like we're at a baseball game. And at a baseball game, one bottle of water costs $2. And that's over here in this table of values. We're seeing that one bottle of water costs $2. That means if you were to get three bottles of water, it's $6. And what I want to know here, if we were to get five bottles of water, how much would that cost us? So we have a table of values here, y'all, because obviously you could buy one bottle or two bottles or three or five or seven or eight. It's up to you to decide how much you want to buy. And then over here, we just look at all the different costs and it just depends on how many bottles we buy. So again, what we're comparing here is the number of bottles versus the cost. And we know that one bottle costs $2. That's right there. That is our verbal ratio. We are comparing the bottles to cost and we are given one to two. So how much would five bottles cost? Now bottles are up here and what I don't know would go here. Now I think most of you realize the pattern, you're just gonna do times two times two, so times two would be a 10. And again, that's kind of that scale factor. A lot of you notice that this answer doubles, so this answer should, should double, and we're gonna see here that it's $10. It will cost $10. Now we're not converting anything. We're not converting from like inches to feet or percents to decimals. We're just predicting, like if I wanted to buy five bottles of water, how much would it cost? So in this scenario, y'all, we are predicting how much it would cost if we change up how many bottles we buy. Um, the next question asks how much would eight be? So again, if we know that one costs $2, then eight bottles would cost $16. The 16 would go here, okay? And that is us just kind of seeing an example where we're just trying to predict how much something might cost if we buy a little bit more. All right, now we're down here to um, this fighter jet setup. And you can see this is the picture of the real fighter jet, while this is a picture of what would be like a model that somebody might build. So we're going to read this first setup, and it's going to kind of change a little bit. Um, but let's start here with the first one. I'm going to get my highlighter out. So the first one says that Tim received a model of an F-16 Fighting Falcon. So that's the plane here flown by the Thunderbirds. Um, and so he got this for uh, his birthday. It looks like this would have been what he got for his birthday. It would have been the um, toy model. Okay. And the scale is one inches represents three feet. So on this like model, every one inch that we see represents three feet in real life of the actual wingspan. So this is a really critical piece of information. So what we're already given is the scale of converting inches to feet. We can already see that we're going to be converting here. The model is going to be in inches and it's going to represent a certain number of feet of the jet in real life. So the one converts to 3.3. And we're going to use that now. We're going to finish setting up our proportion. If the wingspan on the model is 10 inches, so inches, where do we have inches, top or bottom? We have it up top. So we're going to put a 10 here. And what we don't know then is what is the actual wingspan of the jet in feet. So again, let's just reread this question so you don't lose sight of what we're doing. If the scale for the model is 1 inches represents 3.3 .3 feet, what is the actual wingspan of the jet if I know that this model is 10 inches? Now up here, we kind of saw a scale factor. We realized that it's just times two every time. I don't know if you guys see a scale factor here or not, so I'll remind you of our other method, which is to simply cross multiply and divide. So here we have a 3.3 .3 times 10, so 3.3 .3 times 10. And now I'm just gonna divide it by one, which is not going to change anything so it's a 33. So the actual wingspan of the jet would be 33 feet in real life. 33 feet in real life. Some of you probably saw that if you saw 1 times 10. 
So 3.3 times 10 is also the 33. But again, old fashioned, just cross multiply and then divide by the number that's with that X. Now I want you to actually pause the video and I want you to read this on your own. Just read this first to see if you can just kind of on your own in your brain answer, how is this next question different than the one that we just did? So just pause it real quick and read through this. All right, so hopefully you realize that the difference is that in the last problem, I wanted to know the wingspan of the jet in feet. And now I want to know the wingspan of the model, which is going to be in inches. So it's a very similar setup. We're still comparing inches to feet. And we are still using the same scale. It's right here in the middle. We still have the same scale. So I'm still going to put in this one inch represents 3.3 feet. Now here's the difference. The next part tells us if the actual wingspan of the jet is 33 feet. So feet's down here. What we don't know this time is how long is the wingspan of the model, which is up here in inches. This is what we don't know this time. So again, we're going to cross multiply. 1 times 33 in the calculator is going to be a 33. And we're going to divide that by this. So we've got 1 times 33 which of course is 33. And now let's divide by the 3.3. And we can see here that it would be 10 and then up top is inches, 10 inches. Now we already knew that because of, again, of course, these two problems are meant to go together. But sometimes I might be asking you to tell me one thing. Sometimes I might be asking for another. So the big thing I wanted to remind y'all is like in a math class, you don't always necessarily do the same thing for every single problem. Notice that for this one, the X was down here in the denominator while here the X is in the numerator. So this page was meant to talk about two things. Remind you that X could go in either spot. You've just got to read and to talk about the difference between converting when you're given like a scale like this versus making a prediction for something that's going to happen in the future. All right. So now I want you guys to actually flip over with me since page five should be done. Let's now flip over to page six. On page six, let's look at this first problem together. I'm going to walk you through the expectations for what needs to go in this box and what needs to go in this box. And then you guys are actually going to be doing two, three, four, and five on your own. All right. So for this one, Daniel can read eight pages of his book in five minutes. So the first thing that we're caring about is that we're comparing, uh, oops, not an M, pages. Um, and I can actually put that over here. We're going to compare pages to minutes. So we have like a numerator and a denominator established already. Pages to minutes. Whichever comes first usually goes up top. All right, so we know the first fraction is going to be eight to five, eight pages in five minutes. Now at this same rate, how long will it take him to read the entire 264 page book? Now how long is in minutes? So what we don't know is actually down here. We don't know the minutes, but we know the number of pages is up here, which is 264. So this box is a place for you to put the proportion. So over here, I want you to write the verbal model. What are you comparing? Then I want you to put the proportion over here. And then when you cross multiply and get an answer, I want you to put the answer here and label it. So let's get our calculator out. We're going to do 264 times 5. All right, now we're going to divide by the 8. So the answer here is 165, but then 165 what? Remember, the unknown was in the bottom with minutes, so we've got 165 minutes. That goes in this box. And I know my pen's a little fat, so I can kind of minimize that right there. 165 minutes. So, depends, remember? The X, sometimes it goes up here. Sometimes it's down here. If in this problem I told you how many minutes he was planning on reading for like an hour and I wanted to know how far he would have gotten, then 60 would have gone down here for an hour, 60 minutes, um, and then the unknown would have been up here. So it just literally depends on the scenario. It's not going to be the same every time. You have to read the problem, look at what you're comparing, and write the proportion, and then come up with your final answer here. 
Now I am going to keep going in the video. I'm going to skip over questions two through five because you're going to practice that on your own and you're going to put answers into a Google form. But down below here, I have a couple more problems that I want to do in this video with y'all right now. And then when I'm done with the video, you guys are going to be um, up here working on this part. Okay. So keep taking notes with me here. When flying, a lot of you guys know this, um, if you've ever been on an airplane, and you guys, it depends, uh, at your age you might not have been yet, but if you have been on a plane, um, sometimes they'll have like a screen in front of you and you can kind of see how far you have until you reach your destination. So on this screen here, whatever three-fourths of an inch is, which is a very small amount, like three-fourths of an inch is not a very big distance, it represents 50 miles traveled in real life. So already, let's just go ahead and write down our verbal model here. We're comparing inches to miles, and I'm going to put inches to miles. And we know that three-fourths of an inch represent 50 miles. So be very careful. I'm going to recommend that we put the decimal version of the three-fourths of an inches so that way we can actually use our calculator to multiply. All right, if you estimate about two inches left on your screen, so on your screen you've got about two inches left, approximately how many miles till your destination? Now, I don't want you guys to think X always goes on the bottom just because the two so far that we've seen on this page, X goes on the bottom. I want to remind you guys that there are times when the unknown might be in the numerator, we saw that there, and then here we saw it in a couple of other examples. We've seen X in the numerator, so it really does depend. And again, I just know on this page it's been on the bottom both times, so I don't want you to think it's always supposed to go there, all right? But since we've set up our verbal model and now we have our proportion, we are ready to solve this proportion. So now we're going to cross multiply. We're going to do 50 times 2, which you all know is 100. So now we're going to do 100 divided by 0.75. So I'm going to do 100 divided by my 0.75 and it looks like it's 133.3 repeating so 133.3 repeating and now let's label it this was miles so we're about 133 miles away from our destination we're about 133 miles away so if the plane that you are in is traveling at 525 miles per hour so now we're comparing miles per hour and the speed is 525 miles in one hour so if we have 133.3 miles I'm just going to round it to 133 miles I want to know how long will it take us now remember this time we're talking about hours so let's see we've got 133 times 1 and now we're going to divide it by the 525 all right, so 0.25 of an hour, a fourth of an hour, one-fourth of 60 minutes, one-fourth of an hour. So think about it. What is one-fourth of 60 minutes? What's one-fourth of an hour? If we break an hour, the clock, up, you guys know that this would be the 15, this is the 30, this is the 45, and then this is another hour. So stick with me on this. If we only have a fourth of an hour left, we don't have 25 minutes. We only have 15 minutes remaining. Okay? So again, this whole problem from beginning to end, if you see two inches left on the screen, you know, okay, I've got about 133 miles left till we land. And if your plane is going this fast, you can also calculate, okay, we're going to land in about 15 minutes. Okay? So again, how long until you land? I'm going to put a 15 here, 15 minutes. And I'm going to box that in blue. And that's how long it'll be until we land. And now let's talk about a science example real quick. Okay. So a water molecule, this is what a water molecule looks like, y'all. It actually has two of these hydrogen atoms and then just one oxygen atom. And that's why water is called H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen, H2O. All right. So one water molecule has two hydrogens to one oxygen. I want to know how many hydrogen atoms would there be, so how many hydrogens, if we saw four water molecules total, okay? So give me one sec. Here's a water molecule. I'm just going to draw one real quick. There's one water molecule, all right? And now let me just group this. 
All right, so if one of these water molecules is right in front of us, here's a second one, a third one, and a fourth one. It wants to know in four water molecules, how many hydrogen atoms do we see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we see eight hydrogen atoms. Eight hydrogen atoms. Now, the verbal model, the kind of shortcut here is, is that in um, one water molecule, in one water molecule, we had two hydrogens. So in four water molecules, we'll have how many hydrogens? And again, there's the four times two, which is eight, and eight divided by one is eight, so we're all set. Now, the only thing you have left to do is go back, and you're going to try two, three, four, and five on your own. Remember, you want to write in here, in each little blank spot, what it is you're comparing, and then in this part, you're putting in the proportion, and then over here, you're putting the final answer labeled. There will be a Google form waiting for you on Schoology for you to enter your answers. That concludes this video. Thank you.